Hello, and welcome back to Wild Sun Art Studio. My name is Robinson. If you like today's video, please like it down below, comment, subscribe, and share. And I think you're going to like this because this is an old, totally favorite play tool. Play tool? I guess that's a thing. This is silver tape. It's actually called, well, they call it foil tape. Um, it's HVAC duct sealing, sealing and patching insulation materials, emergency household and auto repairs. So this is also extreme weather. And I'm kind of wondering if there's something about it. Oh, look, it's also low VOCs. Um, but I'm, and this is made by the Nashua Tape Company. I'm wondering if there's something special about this, like if it's a heavier thickness or mill or, I don't know, something. Because it was kind of expensive. I mean, expensive is a relative term. Um, I don't know where I put it, but I used to have some duct tape, like, kind of like, this isn't duct tape, this is, um, uh, it's what people who are doing sound and they've got wires all over the floor and they want to uh, gaffer's tape is that what it's called something like that I use it for book binding so it shows you what I know um, it has a very cloth like texture anyway this isn't important but but this tape comes in this width I don't know where my role of that is um, and this width is two inches something like that this one is almost let's see it's three and uh four through twelve thirteen sixteenths anyway it's bigger than two and a half inches and you can make a an atc an artist trading card that's only has to be two and a half inches and this is a little bit more than that so you can make an atc that has, you know, like, like the, um, with no seams. With this stuff, it's not quite two and a half inches wide. So in order to make an ATC, you have to kind of overlap it and then you get a seam down the middle. Da, 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 da. Um, and I, so I went, I happened to be out for a drive making my car go because I never go anywhere anymore. Um, so we took a little run around and I ended up at the Home Depot and they had this for $22. Now, I don't know, it's all opinion, but, um, a lot of my craft items don't cost $22 and that's kind of a lot of money, except this is a lot of tape. There's a lot of fun and play to be had. So let's get down to that A. Um, so what makes this different from what I think of as regular duct tape, kind of rubbery kind of duct tape, is that this comes with a backing on it. So let's see if I can do this. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. There we go. Um, this is actual kind of metal. Know, does it, yeah, that makes kind of a metallic sound. This is like tin foil that has glue on the back and then they put this backing stuff on. So we can play with it. So the way to play with it, 
One way to play with it is this is just a piece of white cardstock and I cut a piece like this and I tore off the back and I stuck it down on the cardstock so I can get three ATCs on this. Now you'll notice that there are lots of kind of lumpy bumpies all over this and we get these striations when I when I was pulling it off the paper like it doesn't come very smoothly and so it makes these bumps. Anyway, there's a really easy way around this. If you have a credit card and it can be an active credit card, we're not going to um, mess with it. Or if you happen to have old key cards or old credit cards or anything, you can just take these and just patiently go back and forth. And it tends to take out all the little air bubbles and smooth out those um, bumps, and bumps. There's still a little bit right here. Now, as we mentioned, we this is a, a little bit over two and three quarters of an inch so if you want to figure out where you are with the tape wait a second i'm gonna fold this over and uh, i've been doing paper cuts i have these little paper cut fuzzies all over the place Now, what we can do is just measure from the end of the paper um, down three and a half inches and at seven and at ten and a half. Now, I'm making artist trading cards. You could make, actually, let's do that. We'll make some little shapes that are not artist trading cards that are just little shapes and you could put them in your journals Ta -da! Um, so i'll show you you can actually i'm drawing with pencil it doesn't seem to make a mark on the tape because pencil on metal wouldn't do that really but as soon as you hold it up to the light you can tell where those lines are and um, then when you draw on it, you can see all the wonderful little lines and shapes on there. And these were both done in pencil. And this was done with a Sharpie pen. Um, this is the nib on that Sharpie pen and the other nib that works is that nib. But, but they're both the fine point nibs. So, actually, let's work with the blue just because, just because. Um, so let's say over here, we wanted to make, you can tell I have sort of a wandering, mark there. I think that sometimes you see it. Um, there's still some sort of the, the striation marks and that can make a person
um, make a weird mark a little. So this is somewhat a study in imperfection. Rouse, as in rouse yourself from your uh, by the way sharpies are great because they are permanent ink and I have found that watercolor pens smear there are my watercolor pens. Let's get a color dark enough for you us to see. Art Edge. Cray These are Crayola. Yeah, first of all, that's not showing up as much. And if I use a Sharpie. So the... the Metal takes the color a whole lot better. And kind of use the side. So watercolor doesn't work so well. These permanent markers work way better. And this is a huge, gigantic chisel tip. Let's see what happens. Yeah, these are really great for uh, coloring in. Let's put these up to the light and see what yeah, so you get, there's sort of a luminosity and um, let's see if we can make that heart just a little more even. That's better. Better and yet imperfect. And uh, one of the things that's great about working with this metal tape is that I can cut it and it doesn't make my blade all sticky because the stickiness is kind of embedded between the paper on the back and the metal on the front, neither of which are sticky, so for whatever reason. Um, I end up with something that is not uh, sticky. Yeah, like it doesn't end up becoming... Actually, I don't think this orange is going to work. Oh, it does work. That's great. Now, the thing that's cool about the these fine tip markers and the metal tape is that, as we saw here with the pencil, there's actually dimension here. When you run your finger over it, there's um, a texture, which is really fun. So you can draw the texture with pencil, and this is just a B, and a 2B pencil, which is sort of the standard pencil. It doesn't have to be a fancy drawing pencil. Um, a 2B will work just fine. You might want to sharpen it and then use the tip a little to round the tip. If you have too sharp of a pencil, I have uh, actually torn the tape. And 
I don't know where all my mechanical pencils are, but um, mechanical pencils tend to be, here's one. Um, can you see that little tip is way too tiny and the number of times I've torn metal tape are, you know, enough to tell me not to use mechanical pencils. We want um, a rounder here. Let's do them together. We want a rounder, thicker tip. I mean, I guess if you wanted to do something really fine, you could give it a try. You can also use a, a, oh, I don't want to, um, you know, regular pens, ballpoint pens. That's the name. Ball point. And you get a little texture with that too. So here, I can write a cool word. So this could become a cute little medallion that, you know, you put inside your journal like a journal like here ta-da ta-da I don't know anywhere anywhere you want so that's one idea I have for you the other idea is so much fun you can't even believe it that is to take some craft foam. Oh, before I leave this, you can draw an image with pencil and then color it in with um, a Sharpie marker so that this image would be a little bit more visible than it already is. So the other thing you can do with your tape is you can cut some tape and actually, let's do this because I just had a cool idea of making another medallion-y thingy for one's journal. Um, I've had a bunch of success when you curl the um, tape towards the metal side and a little bit the metal tends to keep the curl and the paper will uh, separate more easily. And now, of course, that's being hard because I'm on camera. And so it's making a liar of me. But anyway, I have had... Now this is doing that thing again. See where we get these little ripples. So keep a hold of it. You don't want this to curl in on itself. So this is craft foam. You know the kids stuff you can buy at the art departments in um, big box stores. And you put this on the foam. And then again you can take A key, a key card or credit card and just smooth that down. Then you cut out the foam and let's close that up. Is a good word. Ooh, let's use this word. Pow. 
hour. And no, is this one working? Yes, it is. So tell me, and you can tell me this in the comments below. Do you find wherever you live, however old you are, whatever school you went to, whatever religious institution you attended as a child, do you find that the idea that we all are really powerful beings, we don't hear that a lot. We hear that other people have power all the time, like maybe politicians have a lot of power or people who are super rich have a lot of power. But when it comes down to talking about ourselves, we rarely hear, and again, this is really easy to cut and it doesn't gum up my scissors. And I have made this really fun that has rippled a little in the cutting. Anyway, do you find that we don't hear a lot about how powerful we are? We just hear stuff about how powerful other people are. And you have to have something special in order to be a powerful person, like a lot of money or a lot of political power or have studied for a gajillion years to get your doctorate and something or other. Um, but you don't hear very often that every human being is like like a, a, a rather immense battery of energy and power all by ourselves. Anyway, I'm, I'm kind of thinking about that a lot these days. So that's why the word power. So um, this has some heft to it, but again, it would make a great little what's a who's it to put in one's journal. And I made some artist trading cards. Art saves lives. And this is a little cityscape. And this is sort of a faux Mondrian painting. Not really. It's not halfway as brilliant as his stuff. Ooh, and this I traced a paper cut. Whoops, I didn't trace it that way. I traced it like this, right? And I traced it with the fine point blue sharpie. And then I went in with the red sharpie and I colored the hearts. And these little lines, which you have to try this. This is so cool. It, there's a lot of texture there where I did all the lines. But there's texture all over it. I don't know if kind of flashing it in the light, can you, can you see that there's actually some shadow happening? So when we draw with this, we're actually squishing down into the foam even more than we did. I mean, there's a little, I don't know if you can really see it, but there is, there's a little texture where I wrote those letters. And you can tell a little bit that just pressing through the metal tape, through the glue and onto the paper, um, I, there's a little indentation. But when we use this craft foam and we draw lines, you know, there really is quite a lot of texture and shadow. And then this was sort of a little mandala-ish doodling thing. So these are great artist trading cards. They make great little medallion cards to use in your journals or on somebody's 
birthday card or or a present they'd make a cool gift tag wouldn't they um yeah so how fun is this please leave a comment about oh i'm running out of time please leave a comment about power in your life may you have may you know all the power you have all of us Blessings to you. See you next time. Bye.